In this video I'm going to demonstrate the use of the Corpus Callosum program. So what we see here is uh, the main window as it appears just after the program has been loaded. The first step in performing analysis is to load an image. So we use the open file uh, tool from the file menu and we're going to load, load one of these images. In this case this is a JPEG image uh, but you could use TIFF images, bitmaps, or DICOM images. Now this is a JPEG image, so it's asking for a calibration in this case. I happen to know that it's, this one is 0.45 millimeters per pixel. And so this is the image. Let's optimize it. So zoom, first of all, click on the zoom tool, left click, hold it down and drag, left and right to zoom in and out. Click with the right mouse button to pan and now change the brightness and the contrast in this case. Click on that, left click and drag to change the brightness and the contrast so that we get good definition between the corpus callosum and the rest of the brain, like so. And then we can start drawing the region of interest. Click on the region of interest tool. Find a point somewhere on the boundary of the corpus callosum. Click once with the left button and then click and hold it down in order to leave the trace. You can do this in one smooth motion or you can let go of the button and do it in several steps. In this case I started near the genu but you can start at any arbitrary point. I'm also tracing clockwise but there's no reason why you can't go anti-clockwise if you prefer. To finish the path double click with the left mouse button and that will close the path and it will provide preliminary calculations of both path area and perimeter. So the next step is to just make sure that we're happy with the path. We have an edit tool here, edit path, click on that with the left button and you've got the option to move any individual point. Left mouse button, hold it down and you can drag a point around as you require, like so. And if you want to add a point, double click on a line segment and it will create a new point for you. More convenient tool, however, is this one. This is the nudge tool. Left click on that. Now, when you left click with, with the mouse, you get a circular object that will serve to nudge the path, the region of interest, in the direction that you move the mouse like so. So if we click beneath this uh, stray point you see the nudging tool and if we push upwards you'll see it which simply pushes, nudges the path up towards the other points. And we can do the same thing from both inside and outside the path. So what do these uh, red and the green points mean? Well, one of the limitations of the uh, Denenberg algorithm is that it requires a convex path at the site of the terminal points of the center line. And if at the terminal point of the center line the path is concave, then the then you cannot calculate the colossal widths because they will fall outside of the region of interest. So areas where the path is locally concave are, are labelled in red and parts where the path is convex are labelled in green. So what this allows you to check is that areas near the genu and the splenium um, are have a satisfactory amount of green because if they're all red then the algorithm will fail and you'll not get a satisfactory result. So this red point here is clearly stray as the, you can see the shape of the underlying callosum here is convex so we can carefully just push that out with the nudge tool to uh, push make it green and make it conform to the uh, shape of the callosum a little better, like so. Similar uh, changes can be made uh, on this side.
So we'll smooth that out and we'll just ch carefully adjust this little bit of the callosum there. You'll notice that when I'm uh, nudging from within, it will actually nudge both the dorsal and the ventral surfaces simultaneously. And that's important to be aware of. So once we're happy that we've got a satisfactory tracing, we can click Calculate, which is this button here. And it will go away, and we will calculate the uh, bounding rectangle, position of the apex end of the genu, and of course the 99 centile widths across the corpus callosum together with the centre line and terminal points for the minimum sum of widths criterion. These are presented in tabular format here. Oops, sorry. Tabular format here. You can see uh, the widths calculated numerically and the graph presented there. At the bottom of this list we have the sum of widths. Also calculated are areas of the individual uh, centile polygon segments and the Denenberg parameters here. Top left of this window we have a button marked save. If we type that in we will can save a spreadsheet file which can be opened in any major spreadsheet. Like so. In this case we're using OpenOffice but uh, Microsoft Excel will do perfectly well as well. So here we have the centiles presented together in a fairly simple to understand format. Okay, so what about the other buttons and the other tools? Um, let's clear the region of interest. This button's fairly self-explanatory. It simply erases your tracing and any analysis, but leaves the image untouched so that you can perform another tracing if required. Immediately to the left we have clear all and this resets the program to its initial state. Immediately to the left of this one, however, this one is an interesting tool, and this one is called Open Tracing. If we click on this, this will allow us to open a tracing that belongs to a previous analysis. So every time you save an analysis result, it saves the accompanying trace. And this is the trace that we were just using, which we've reopened, and if we wish, we can reanalyze, like so. And you'll notice that these numbers are essentially the same because of course it is essentially the same trace. Other tools that are worth pointing out, again if I load another image, are this button here, the reset image, this resets the brightness, contrast and magnification. This one here, flip, horizontal, and flip vertical which are fairly self-explanatory and are useful if the uh, image supplied has been captured in an alternative orientation. One that I will demonstrate but is perhaps of limited use is the uh, auto calculate function. What this does is it performs the uh, runs the Denberg algorithm every time you modify the path so for instance if we nudge the path, this will, it will perform the analysis for every single modification that we make. It's a little bit slow, um, so it's perhaps best if you leave this switched off, but it can be quite useful just to see what is happening or what effect on the underlying widths uh, a modification to the path will have. Unfortunately, due to the speed, it's probably best left switched off. So that concludes the tutorial.